Hi, Kowalczyk here. I recently fell in love with The Cat Who Saved Books by Sasoke Natsukawa. I found it through the Find the Path book club on their Discord, not sponsored, not affiliated, and I decided to make a little quilt for my door based on the cat and the bookstore. So I'll be using mostly scraps for the books themselves, but first, I need to do a little bit of math. I'm following a tutorial, linked below, that better describes what to do. So step one, I'm going to use Inkscape image properties to add a grid. The best fit is a 4x4 grid, which isn't great for my 7x7 7 7 inch block I want to make, but I'll make it work, somehow. The grid ends up at 1 and 3 quarter inches squares. That math isn't too terrible. To make the grid easier to see, I'm adding some black lines. Its body will be half the size of the block, so I'll want to end up with a 3.5 inch by 7 inch rectangle. So I'll be cutting a 4 inch by 7.5 inch rectangle to allow for seam allowance. To make that cutie patootie, I'll want to end up with a less than 1 and 3 quarter inch triangle. So I'll make a 1 and 3 quarter inch square to add to it. The face rectangle will be fairly easy. Half of 7 is 3 and a half. Its width will end up at 1 fourth the size, so we'll finish at 1 and 3 quarters. Add a half inch seam allowance and that will be a 2 and 1 quarter inch by 4 inch rectangle. Those ears aren't exactly a flying geese, but I'll make them a flying geese. This will make my life easier and I like big ears on cats. It's cute. So I'll need the same size rectangle in my background as the base and I'll add 2 and 1 quarter inch squares as the ears. I will also need a 4 inch by 4 inch square of background. I start the cutting by being frustrated by my new ruler. I got it from Walmart with a gift card and it took me a bit to get used to it. I cut the body way longer than I need, but I'll cut it down when needed. Yes, I decided to finger press the fabric instead of ironing it. And yes, it does make my life harder. Don't be me, take the time to iron, it'll actually save time. Next is the head. Cut out two squares for the two ears. I cut out the square for the butt. I cut out the background for the ears, but it came out wonky, so I had to redo it. Then the background square. To make 
sure I cut out all the pieces. I put them vaguely together and compare it to my cut guide. It's all cut up, so I assemble it off camera. I link the tutorial below if you want to know how to do it. I ended up tweaking the ears to be adult sized ears. Now it's at this point where I realize I messed up. I want the block, once it's connected to everything else, to be 7 inches, meaning it actually has to finish at 7 and a half. My math before was right, so go me. But too bad I misjudged my final dimensions, and no, flipping the ruler does not fix this problem. Eventually, I decide my best option is to square it up and add a thin border, hoping it doesn't look too silly. To make the books, I attached wide background pieces that were a little shorter than a finished block to colored pieces almost the same size as the finished block. I cut these into thin strips to make the books. This does create a lot of waste, so I'm using fabrics where I don't have much more than what you see anyway. This will hopefully give me an eclectic variety in a finished piece. I cut a few different sized pieces of each. To make the book blocks, I stitched the strips next to each other with a quarter inch seam allowance. I staggered the tops of the books since books are all different widths and heights in real life. To make the slanted books, I cut out a large square, much larger than the finished block, and cut it on a slant. I sewed each side of the slant to the books. After it was sewn, I cut the sides a quarter inch away from the closest book. I tried to show me cutting the final blocks, but this kept happening. I'll draw it out. I lined up the 7.5 inch mark with the lowest book moved it up until it looked nice, making sure not to move the top of the ruler above the black. I cut along the top and side. Then flip the ruler around, lining up the cut corner with the seven and a half corner. Cut again, you'll end up with a perfect square. After making the strips of books as long as I wanted, I took one and a half inch wide strips and attached them to the shelves. Later on, I made the outer border two and a half inch strips, but I kept the inner shelves the smaller size. Off camera, I made a mock-up of the quilt in Inkscape. I'm only using the parts I need to applique to make a printing template. I measured out the size of where I'm placing each item, so I'll use guidelines to help me make them the perfect size. I decide to open the lock, since the books did get out of their prison. I save as I go, making sure the document is filed away neatly so I can find it again. I changed my guidelines again so I can fit the scissors to the needed dimensions.
the scissors I make the right size before I split up the pieces. I end up changing completely. I make individual rectangles and stagger them left and right as I go, creating the illusion of many coins stacked carelessly. Let's make the orange cat into a tabby. Now that the piecing is done, I'm going to tape it to a window and trace the outline of the cat onto some paper. A small piece of cardboard helps keep my line straight and is much lighter than my rulers. Turn the paper over every so often to look at my lines and make sure that they are lined up with the cat. I hated my first try, so I trace over the original. my ruler to trace some guidelines. This will help me make the little M look neater and will help me place the eyes. Give him a cute nose. Because of where I placed my camera, I can't get my ruler in for the tail. Instead, I trace a line as tall as I want the tail to be, then use that to draw the tail.
put it in a diagonal line to give the tail some shape. I tried to freehand the details, but it doesn't look right. I use the ruler to help place the details where I want. I use a sharpie to darken the final lines. After that's finalized, I make a few copies. That way if I mess up, I'll still have something to use. After putting on double-sided interfacing, I place it underneath the cat using the holes I cut as a stencil. I trace using a friction pen since it'll disappear with heat. I detach the pieces from the back, cut, and make sure everything matches the stencil as I go. It 
waste a bit of double-sided interfacing, but it seemed the best way to ensure nothing would fray with time without needing a ton of hand stitching. To iron on the pieces, I used my stencil to line up everything. I traced the cat's tail using my first stencil. I changed my more detailed stencil and made little dots in the corners to help me line up the pieces. Once everything looks good, I use my iron to press and put them on permanently. I sped up the footage. In truth, I went slow and made sure not to bump anything as I went. Pieces representing the labyrinths I've ironed on off camera because I didn't hit record. But here's me putting a blanket stitch onto the lock. I use a blanket stitch for two reasons. It will prevent the edges from rolling up, but it also gives it a neat finished look. You can get similar results from using a zigzag stitch on your sewing machine, but I wanted some hand sewn elements to this. So here's the pieced quilt top. I haven't finished it as I've ran out of time and I don't know how I want to finish it. 
Should I stitch in the ditch each element? Add an overall design, like a maze throughout the piece? Let me know your opinion in the comments. I want to make more. Tell me what to do next. If you want to see more, please give this a like and subscribe. Bye bye